Thanks to Bellroy for sponsoring this video. Big changes are coming to the iPhone and breaking news, Apple just confirmed one major leak. The next iPhone is officially getting USB-C. There's some new laws going into place and Apple says, You will have to comply. But that's not all. Apple has some other major surprises in store with some new products, including the iPhone, that are really good for us and also some that are sort of really bad for us. So as we do here on the Apple Circle, let's break down the latest Apple leaks, news, and rumors that you need to know about, including these crazy leaks that just came out that Apple is really not happy about. Let me tell you about some major changes coming to Apple products and also some changes Apple is not going to make because they're going to fight the law to make sure they win. It seemed like Apple was gonna end the year on a high note. We got lots of great hardware this year. We got some pretty good software with customization, but then this happened and this happened and this happened. Tim, what is going on? Apple is making some odd and bad changes with their current product lineup, and I'll save my whole rant for another video. But in this one, let's talk about some major changes that Apple is making that's actually good news for you and I. They're actually going to do some good stuff, whether they want to or not. And to keep things short, sweet, and to the point, because of some new laws and regulations popping up around the world internationally, Apple is going to have to comply and switch the port on the iPhone from Lightning over to USB-C. They've done it now on all iPad models. They've done it on the Mac. For the most part, there is MagSafe, but that's a separate story. They're even now doing it on the new and improved Apple TV remote. But besides Mac accessories, the iPhone is the last remaining modern device with a uh, kind of old and outdated lightning port that is finally going to sooner than later see the end of its life. That might be the case, but not for long. We've been hearing for years now throughout multiple reports and from different sources and analysts that Apple's ultimate goal with the iPhone is to remove the port altogether. That there was a dream at some point, maybe from Steve Jobs, maybe from Johnny Ive or somewhere uh, in that spaceship, someone had an idea to remove all the ports and maybe even all the buttons to just give us a simple slab of glass and stainless steel or maybe titanium or aluminum. That's it, no buttons, no ports. That's that's the future that Apple wants and one that they're honestly maybe even working towards right now. We'd even heard not that long ago that Apple was at least testing one model of the iPhone that would not have a port on the bottom. And there's good and bad with that. Obviously, uh, the wireless charging idea is nice and you could slap this thing on a wireless charger and it would just work. But uh, Apple doesn't have a great track record with that, RIP air power, and because there are other things you do with a cable than just charge your phone for diagnostics, car play, transferring things, stuff like that, a wireless future is nice to imagine, but not entirely practical right now, at least not yet. So maybe Apple makes this move to USB-C for a year or two just to comply with the laws and regulations, but then just ends up removing the port altogether to say, hey, if we can't have the port we wanna put on the phone, we're just gonna remove it entirely and go with the future we think is best. What are your thoughts on the port drama? Are you thumbs up or thumbs down for USB-C? Would you buy a portless iPhone? Let me know your thoughts to the uh, Apple controversy and the Apple conspiracy theories down below. Next up, another good change that Apple is making to the iPhone 15 that is good news for a lot of us is the expansion of the dynamic island. Right now, it is just on the 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max as a flagship feature, but according to rumors, next year, the dynamic island is going to be on all iPhone models, whether that's three models or four models, whatever iPhone you decide to buy, as long as it's not the SE, you're gonna get to the magic of the dynamic island. Another change many are excited about as well is a more useful camera upgrade. Not to say that the 48 megapixel main camera in the 14 Pro and Pro Max is a bad move, but you sort of have to utilize it in separate apps or shoot in RAW. It's not the most substantial update ever, at least not what a lot of people thought it would be, but what'd be way more useful is better optical zoom, which exactly is what Apple has in store for at least one model of the iPhone 15. We're hearing now that Apple is closing in on putting a 10X optical periscope zoom lens system into one of the higher end 15s, maybe the 15 Pro or the 15 Ultra, which is sort of weird to say, uh, but 
if you do want a more useful camera feature and this 10x optical zoom, that should be on the iPhone 15. We've also heard a lot of reports about 8K video recording and an astrophotography mode. None of those have been confirmed in any capacity, but they could be features coming to the 15 in 2023. And while we're here, one last note for the iPhone, uh, one change Apple could make begrudgingly that'd be good for you and I, is if they lowered the price of the 14 and 14 plus. I know Apple isn't in the business of giving us discounts or lowering the price on any products, but given the less than stellar rollout of these phones and Apple currently slashing production on them, a little bit of a discount in one form or another would be nice to see. Maybe this is just a cut right off the top of the main price. Maybe this is in, the, in terms of a better trade-in value. If you basically trade in anything like Samsung, you can get a pretty big discount on your phone. Maybe they work with the carriers. Just throwing out there that an iPhone discount for the 14 and 14 plus could be good for uh, regular Apple customers, uh, whether Apple likes it or not. Okay, now before we continue, let's take a break for just a moment because I've got to show you guys this awesome collection of beautifully crafted, really high quality accessories here to give your Apple tech a much needed upgrade. And of course, it's all made possible by this video's sponsor, Bellroy. Now, if you have not heard of Bellroy before, let me introduce you to an amazing company that has been making really fantastic wallets, cases, and an excellent variety of tech accessories for years now. And in this video in particular, I've got to show off three of my favorite Bellroy accessories that you absolutely need to know about. This first one here is one of my personal favorites, and this is their uber popular desk cat. It's here to help you keep your workspace more clean and organized by storing all the little things you always seem to need out of sight out of mind, safely and securely tucked away, so when you do need it, you know exactly where to go. Another Bellroy accessory that I'm absolutely loving is this brand new, super nice light laptop sleeve that is the perfect companion for your laptop. It's a perfect way to protect your laptop and keep it safe and secure from the inevitable dings, scrapes, and scratches. It's made of lightweight ripstop fabric and options for 14 or 16 inch laptop sizes. And finally, last but not least, this super sleek tag case is the perfect way to attach an air tag to a bag, backpack, laptop sleeve, keychain, the elastic cord loop, and smooth eco tan leather finish make this really nice, ultra premium, and the perfect accessory for your AirTag. I am just a huge fan of Bellroy products, and they've got the stellar reputation for a reason. All of their stuff is incredibly well made. It is the perfect accessory for your gadget of choice. So check out all that Bellroy has to offer and save today with our special link, 10% off your order by clicking that special link right down below. And honestly, I think this theme of pricing could play a big role in other Apple products we see over the next 12 to 18 months. Look at the iPhone SE, for example. It's not the most flashy product, but you do get, I think everybody can sort of agree, most reviewers can agree, a really good amount of value for the dollar there. And uh, Apple is giving you a lot for this lower end iPhone. And it'd be nice if they can take that theme and bring it over to other products in various categories. For example, the iPad line is sort of an utter mess right now. The new 10th gen iPad is nice, minus the weird pencil compatibility thing, but for 450 bucks, it doesn't really slot anywhere well in the lineup Instead, what Apple really should do if they wanted to give consumers a really great offering is just do a straight replacement of the 9th gen with the 10th gen, 329 price tag and all. For that price, this hardware and software combo I think would be unanimously praised and loved and seen as a really good value for the price. The 329 iPad right now is still a really good deal, but if Apple did the 10th gen iPad at that same price and just replaced that as the lower end entry level iPad, it makes so much more sense and be really good for anyone who just wants a basic iPad, they'd get a really good stellar offering. Right now, it's just sort of a hodgepodge of mess all across the iPad lineup. The same could apply for the Mac lineup as well. We've heard a lot of rumors back and forth over the years about a MacBook SE that would be a lower price offering that gave you still modern Apple Silicon, maybe an older design, but still a good value for the price. And you'd get a good hardware and software experience that was undoubtedly Apple, but also cheaper than the current, like what, 999 entry point. That would be nice. Obviously, Apple is more in the business these days of just lowering the price of older models models and then sort of keeping their other new ones uh, sort of there in a little higher price. But having a MacBook offering, maybe a MacBook SE at, man, do I say $499, $599, something considerably lower than $1,000 
would be an interesting move. And you sort of get where I'm going here. AirPods SE, maybe an Apple TV SE, or even just not even the SE name, drop that. Lowering the price to a $99 threshold for AirPods and Apple TV would be something that makes a lot of sense. Obviously, like I mentioned, Apple is more in the business of keeping around older devices than dropping the price. But even then, people aren't usually getting the best thing. I mean, look at the Apple Watch Series 3. They kept that thing around forever. They dropped the price, but that was a horrible value compared to other things you could get at the same time. Lower prices and different offerings would be nice. And that's sort of been Tim Cook's thing at Apple over his tenure. His mission was to really expand the product lineups to have more options at more price points than was the case when Steve Jobs was CEO. Whether or not that was successful or not depends on who you ask. Obviously, Apple stock price is doing pretty well, much better than it was under Steve Jobs, but that's a whole other debate for another video. But what I just ultimately find so fascinating about this is seeing what Apple does and seeing their motivations. Are they doing something because they think it's going to be good for the consumer? Are they doing this because people really want it and they want to help people accomplish their missions and their dreams? Or are they doing things because they want to do something to make more money or do things for consumers begrudgingly because the law is forcing them to do so? I love Apple. I love a lot of the things they do. I love their products, obviously. I love talking about Apple on this channel, uh, but it is interesting to try to uh, decipher and understand their motivation and see whether they do things because it's good for us or it's good for them. What are your thoughts on Apple in 2023? What products could they release? What price cuts could they put into place? What could they do that would benefit you, the customer? What could Apple do to make them win in your eyes? And what would make you either buy new Apple products, upgrade what you've got, or just make you happy with the company that they're currently not doing right now? Is it new products? Is it more affordable products? Is it price cuts? Is it adding features? Let me know your thoughts to this down below. Sort of a uh, very tough question to answer, but if you've got paragraphs on paragraphs, that's fine. Drop it down below in the comments. We can discuss. As always, I appreciate you guys watching the Apple Circle. Thank you so much. I'm Robert Rosenfeld, and I'll see you all in the next one.